In the content browser, I'm going to create a new material function and call it mf underscore splat offset. The mf is a naming convention to signify that this is a material function. So I'll copy the whole section and then the material function paste it in. The output is simply going to be whatever the final offset UVs are. So we'll just call that offset UVs. For the inputs, we'll create a function input for the initial cell offset and call that 2D offset. The type is going to be a 2D vector input. We can now plug this function input into all the places that the cell offset was plugged into, which is the B slot of this add node, and then the B slot of the penultimate subtract node near the end. We can add a reroute node by double clicking on the spline, which allows us to rearrange the splines to make the flow of the graph a bit more readable. For the next function input, we'll create the node and set its type to vector2 again. This is going to be the integer cell coordinates, which I'll label integer tile UVs. That gets plugged into the A slot of the add node. Lastly, we need the original 0 to 1 repeating UVs. So create a new function input and set its type to vector2d, and I'll call this one repeating UVs. And then we just plug that into the subtract nodes A slot. One more thing we can do is to set the default value on the cell offset to be a default of 0, 0. Zero out the value, plug it into the previous slot, and in the details panel, tick the use preview value checkbox. Hit apply and save. And back in the main material, we'll drag the material function asset into our graph. And we want to plug the integer coordinates into the integer UV slot. And the original 0 to 1 repeating UVs into the repeating UV slot. This means that we can now get rid of the whole bunch of nodes above, as we have all that functionality within our material function. Select them all and delete them. We can get our offset UVs, which for this tile has the default zero offset, and plug it into the texture sample UV input. And we get no change, which is what we want. We have the same result, but a much cleaner graph. Next, we can duplicate the material function and plug in the integer coordinates and the repeating UVs. To get the neighbor's UVs now, we just need to take the cell integer offsets and plug that into the offset slot of the material function. Plug the result directly into the texture and we get the same result, so it all seems to be working as we want. Now the really easy part is that we can duplicate these two nodes to set up the sampling of the other two neighbor's tiles. It's just a matter of plugging in all the right things in the right places to get the result we want. The only difference now is that we want to sample from different neighbors. So duplicate the cell offset constant node and change the value to minus one zero so that we sample the left node. And then for the last one, we want to sample the top left diagonal cell, which is the negative one, negative one cell. I'll move the material function nodes over a bit closer to the compositing nodes. And again, we can copy and paste to chain these samples together. We sample from the texture and then use the result of the last lerp to blend with the current sample using its alpha. And then we do the exact same thing with the last one. And if we have a look at the final result, we see all four samples splatted into the cells and lining up correctly. Now we can deal with the artifacting we can see in some of the cells we can see some horizontal and vertical stripes. This is due to there being pixels around the border of the image. This causes a problem when we sample, even with the clamp mode on, where the pixel along the border of the image gets repeated indefinitely in that direction. The solution to this is to use an image editing program to clean up the image. You can use Photoshop if you want, but one solution is to use a great open source piece of software called Krita. You can go to krita.org 
and download it for no cost. It's cross-platform, so it works on Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'm not going to go into the procedure of installing it, as it's quite a simple process. But I'll just go straight into the program, and we'll do this cleanup quickly. From the File Open menu, navigate to the texture and open it up. I'm going to make sure that I'm on the Brush tool by making sure this icon is clicked on. And then we can go to the Eraser icon and click it to enable the eraser. Then I'm just going to click with my mouse on the canvas and drag around the edge to get rid of all the values in those pixels. Then I'm going to go to the File Export option and save this as a new texture with the original file name with an Edit PNG suffix. The default export settings are good, so just hit OK. Then, back in Unreal, I'll import that edited texture as a new asset. If I have that asset selected and go to my Material Editor, I can highlight all those texture sample nodes and in the Details panel, use the arrow to change them all to use the asset that is currently selected in the Asset Browser. They all get updated and we can see those striping artifacts gone. You might still see the gap artifact between cells depending on the zoom level in the preview window, but we'll come back to that in another video. Let's quickly preview this material on the floor mesh to see how it's working. Dragging the material onto the mesh in the viewport shows that we are indeed getting random splats across the surface. Next, we'll start to put together a puddle material.